who collects data and processes personal data, who processes and stores his own data in, in the way we, we might do it today in-house. Um, also on the right, we have the PII principles, the individuals whose data is being processed and their rights um, are, are usually set out in PII law and uh, regulation. Uh, and I won't go into the detail of, of, of the precisely what the definitions are of, of these guys, these people. You, you can look at that later. But then we have to ask what changes when you outsource processing of that PII into the cloud. First of all, what you have is a contract between the controller who now processes and stores the data in the cloud and the cloud service provider. What you what you don't what doesn't change is in most legal obligations, the controller who has and processes the data, the legal obligations remain with the controller. They don't usually fall on the cloud service provider. And so the only way to govern your choice of a cloud service provider is to find somebody who is well governed and to build that into contract that this is what you want your cloud service provider to do. And that is what ISO IEC 27018 is meant to do. Um, you'll see the dotted line is around the um, uh, cloud uh, service provider who, who provides the PII processing, the contract, and you get certified for conformance to a standard, and that standard at the moment is ISO IEC 27018, and I'll tell you a little about, about where that is. Um, okay, let me tell you a little bit about the content of ISO IEC 27018. 27018 was created by, first of all, stage one, finding all the European laws, usually derived from the Data Protection Directive, that are plowed, applied to cloud processors of personal information. And quite a large number of countries were surveyed. And what happened was we then built stage two, 70 new what is called controls to cover the EU laws. Controls are statements of what you have to achieve in order to meet the law. They're not statements of how you have to achieve it. They're statements of what you have to achieve. And they're things that you might put in front of an auditor with evidence and the auditor will then say yes or no, I believe you achieve this control. But one thing I have to say is that the current data protection directive and its implementations in law around Europe is not very cloud friendly. It, 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 it's got a number of assumptions built into it uh, that really come from pure data centers or outsourcing. So that's why we need a stage three in creating this standard, which is we've analyzed the data protection authority cloud opinions. So for example, the, the July 2012 opinion from the Article 29 Working Party is a very key opinion. And we've taken that and added new controls and new guidance, new objectives and new guidance for how to achieve them to make a combined set of controls that should cover the data protection laws in the whole of Europe. Now, what do we have to do with those? Well, we're going to base our standard on certification to 27001, which is a standard that many of you will know, and it has a set of controls in a catalogue in 27002. So what we want to do with this standard is to augment that certification with the additional pieces to make this a combined certification to cover not only confidentiality, integrity and availability, also the elements of data protection. So once we've got the stage two and stage three controls and guidance, we split those between controls and guidance that appear in the current edition of 27002, and we put the rest into the standard which we're calling 27018. 
So now we have in, in the two standards a combined catalogue of controls and guidance that will tell you, if you meet them, how to not only protect the security but also the relevant privacy aspects for personal information in the cloud. And finally, stage five, of course, is to use the management system in 27001, many of which uh, many of you will be familiar with that already, with this new control set. And so if you're already familiar with and doing 27001, the extension to add the new controls from 27018 should be relatively simple. The current progress and status is as follows. I won't go through the details, but we started this in a study in July 2011. Uh, and we're now getting to the point towards the bottom where we have committee draft one comments due in um, October this, this month in a meeting in Seoul, which is where I will be next week. Um, and I will be consulting Olivier further on that matter after this meeting. And we, we may then get a, a final committee draft in April next year and be published shortly afterwards as a draft international standard. This thing could change. Standardization is never quite perfect in its scheduling. But here's the summary. Um, we believe that the cloud provider market already knows and invests heavily in certification to 27001 using the control of controls and control objectives in 27002. So it's rather advantageous to, to create this, this confidence in the cloud industry by basing cloud provider PIA protection certification based on that and extending it to 27018. That's based on the current EU law and no more. We're trying very hard to make sure that no extensions are put in so that if people are currently processing data in compliance with the law, they should have no problem getting on the bandwagon of compliance with 27018. But we do have some um, uh, data protection act that would like it to go further, but we're trying very hard to, to not do that. And what we're trying to create is a really practical base from which to start creating confidence in both the, the regulators, the customers as well, that clouds can and do process personal data well. And by doing it this way, we're likely to, to be attractive to existing cloud providers, scale well, economically viable to develop the additional accreditation and certification facilities, and then continuously improve once in place. So that is me. I think I now hand back. <laughs> so as a complete uh, conclusion, as you've seen in the previous slide, it's not too late if you are interested to participate in the development of this standard. We have in Luxembourg a local chapter for uh, ISO uh, 20, uh, 27 uh, chapter owned by Ilnas. Uh, and of course, if you are interested to, to join a European Data Center Association, do not hesitate to contact us. Thanks. So, um, if anybody would have any questions to the presenters, they should ask them now. <laughs> Thanks for your uh, excellent story, Fritz Felting, uh, Cunos Trust. Um, one of the things what we see and what we hear around here today as well is it's not only about uh, certification of one service provider, it's about uh, having trusted data in a complete value chain, a complete business value chain, which is being supported by several providers. Can you give a big comment on that and how you think we could deal with that? Uh, well, one of the controls in <coughs> 27018 says that if you have a subcontractor or supplier to yourself, you are required, in order to gain compliance in 27018, to uh, impose by contract on your suppliers no less than is imposed by you. 27. So in other words, your auditor will ask who are your suppliers and then he will have to check you actually put in contract with them the same requirements. So at least in theory that generates the chain and chain of trust that you're, you're talking about. Um, of course, 
one can never be entirely sure and that you follow the entire chain. But that's the, 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 the only way you can do it in a single point of time. But it, it's done if we can do it that way. There's another question here.